Hello YouTube Vintage Radio Restores. You're looking at a Hale Crafters S53A multiband radio. And this radio, I uh, it's one I kind of wanted to have in my collection. And uh, I found one that was in nice shape, they like, look great. There's hardly any corrosion on the chassis or anywhere. And uh, first thing I plugged it in, it hummed, needed filter capacitors. And it seemed to have a lot of noises and pops and wasn't that sensitive. So I went through it, got all the paper capacitors out of it, checked all the resistors in the power supply. Another thing that's kind of an essential here, three prong cord, because this is a metal cabinet. Now it is a transformer design, so it's pretty easy. I just put a little terminal board in here, soldered it right to the case. That's where the ground goes, makes the radio safe put it all back together it sounded great I went did a quick alignment on it sounded great but every once in a while there'd be a snap pock um, crackling and I went through it again cleaned all the controls ended up replacing the volume controller because it was a little touchy looked at everything possible cleaned the tubes tube sockets and what it came down to is this noisy IF cans so if you're looking at this video, you're probably pretty desperate. You've spent a lot of time on a radio. You're trying to decide, can I sell it off on eBay really quick? Not mention the popping and crackling noises. Should I scrap it for parts? No, dive into it and fix the IF cans. Now this radio here has three 455 kilohertz IF cans. Kind of an unusual design. And you can see the ones I've already done have external capacitors. So what's inside these, and I'll just open it up for you. Took it off the board. Where this rivet goes through, and these are the automatic radio brand, but they're similar to others. There's a sandwich of mica wafers in here. And those are capacitors that are in parallel with each side of the coil. And what happens is they, you know, they oxidize. Uh, there's migration of material and if it's bad enough, especially if it's on the B plus side, it will actually arc inside. That's when you get those really big snaps and cracks and then it quiets down once it's burned it out of its path. But this one I wanted as a keeper. Now what I used to do in the past is go through my IF can collection, see if I could find one that wasn't as noisy, but what I found is generally when they're noisy, they're noisy. Now this kind here, a little bit older design. This has a fixed inductor and a variable capacitor. Rarely a problem with these, rarely ever. But this is the kind. And there's one way to fix them. Now I tried a few test subjects and uh, first I tried drilling out the rivet. It was going really smooth until the drill bit caught and separated the bottom from the top ripping all four wires off. Now I have lots of spares of these from radios I've you know, been collecting parts for almost 40 years. So I found the best way to do this and make sure you're in a ventilated room because I don't know what these fumes do. Do at your own risk of course. But the best way is to insert a soldering iron into that rivet, heat it up a bit and push it down and what happens is you loosen the wafer and then at that point you can either heat it up and push it down more but what I usually do is I just start breaking the plastic out just very carefully keep in mind tiny little wires along the side very easy to break so as you can see it started to lift even push it a little bit more, the sign iron. Now this, I don't know exactly what kind of plastic this is, but I have good ventilation here, so I'm not too worried. You can see it gets looser and looser. Now I don't want to go too fast on this one because I want to keep, this is an original from this radio but you got to kind of heat it a bit, loosen it a bit, heat it a bit, and it'll move down and jump out. And then what you do next, and I can show you on one here, 
This is one that's been taken further apart. It's kind of like a cooking show. I got another one in the oven. And this one here, you have these two metal strips, which are the end of the pins. You got to bend them away so they don't touch each other. What happens though, because they don't have the rivet and the plastic holding them, well, you got to do something to hold them down. You can use crazy glue. I use the hot glue gun, just put a little bit of hot glue on each. Now when you solder, it's going to melt the glue slightly, but it'll, re, it'll firm up. And the heat of the radio is not hot enough to loosen the glue again. So then you fill those up with glue. And then you can slide the can back on. Just make sure it goes in the right way. Put the tabs down. Clip it back into the chassis. Then put all your leads back on in the circuit. I always make a diagram. Don't laugh. That makes sense to me. Probably not to you, but made sense to me. And uh, then you sut everything back on, and I do the two capacitors last. Now, the value of the capacitor. This can here, I put a 110 picofarad capacitor. I used my capacitor checker, and it said 100, about 107, I think. And uh, so I put two 110s here, and it worked so that it was peaking the circuit right in the middle of the, uh, the uh, I don't know what you call it, the turning path of these little slugs. This one here, I put a couple hundred tens on and put the capacitor on last, and it was nowhere near. So I don't have a capacitor substitution box. So I just tried a 200, tried a 300, tried a 400. I know this sounds bad, but then 470 was the right value. Sometimes trial and error, if you have a capacitor box, you could sub that in, try it in the circuit. But uh, what I suspect is this one here being the first stage is a different value coil. These two here have the same part number on the can. So it's likely that this one then will be a 470 picofarad as well. And what I discovered is I put these two in, crackling was gone. So it was one of the first two IF cans, and I tried it several times. I could not get it to crackle. I made a video of this before. I could not get it to crackle to make the video. It has to be the right you know, uh, conditions, I guess. I decided to do the 30, even though it was playing perfect, because what happens is, and you can see there's like, like it almost looks like black soot in there. This one's going to go too. So anyway, I just thought that would be a good tutorial. Thanks for watching and listening.